Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Folks, thank you very much for being here. Last night I went to see the Rockies at Coors Field. <laughs> it was incredibly pleasant, as baseball games generally are. And in the seventh inning, one of my favorite things in the world happened. We stood up and in communal bliss sang, take me out to the ball game. So it was all goodness until a very disturbing thought crossed my mind. And it was that I couldn't believe that we were still able to do this, that the seventh inning stretch and take me out to the ball game had not been branded an element of white supremacy and that it had been canceled. This is the world in which we live in now. And it's pretty much the world in which we have lived since George Floyd was killed last year. Since then, the belief that systemic racism has, is embedded in every aspect of our lives and that all American society, even the way we think, must be completely overhauled, has become the ideology of the realm. Indeed, under Biden-Harris, it has become the official state ideology. This is why Americans, a people long recognized by both social scientists and foreign visitors, as having an exceptional attachment to liberty, and you here in the West are especially attached to liberty, are rising from coast to coast to oppose CRT. I have studied CRT, I've studied the, the predecessor critical theory, and I find myself crisscrossing the country constantly to talk about it. I, you said I published a book last year, uh, uh, The Plot to Change America was exactly this, The Plot to Change America, and now I'm seeing what I wrote play out every day. And I take time for my family to travel to several states to help them with uh, legislation they're passing. I, I helped the state today on the phone I forgot how many are close to passing legislation. I think it's close to 20. Um, now, this groundswell of opposition to CRT has finally gotten the attention of those who want to impose this ideology on us. And they're expressing dread at what they're seeing. They're, they're shocked they couldn't take over the K through 12 schools, the workplace, the military, the church, and even the country without meeting resistance. And because they're, they're just now, they're confused the tactics can be contradictory. For example, they pretend that what is happening is not CRT, and yet at the same time tell us who criticize CRT that we're racist. Uh, this happened in an illuminating exchange last week between Joy Reid of MSNBC and Nicole Hannah-Jones of the New York Times. Um, they told what we call whoppers. Nicole Hannah-Jones said, quote, most teachers have not heard or studied critical th race theory. Not true. She also said diversity training and CRT are not related whatsoever, quote unquote. That's also not true. Uh, but their, their exchange served to shed a light on what the left's likely strategy is to contain what is happening across the country. They're laying a predicate for getting their allies in the, giant, in the tech giants to ban criticism of CRT. <clears throat> and they're scaring, they want to scare the owners of you know, premises such as this from renting them out to CRT rallies. This is happening already in Duluth. Last week, the local NAACP spread the libel that criticizing CRT was hate speech, which forced the Holiday Inn to cancel a scheduled uh, meeting. Uh, last week as well, Twitter canceled for, about, for a couple of hours the account of Citizens for Re Renewing America because of a CRT toolkit. Another tactic that they're using is to say that actually we don't want our children to be taught about slavery or Jim Crow or segregation. This is, a com this is completely a red herring. I don't know anybody in this space who thinks that way. Uh, so how can you tell what is happening? Well, Heritage has put together a great handout. We have it outside at our booth. Take it with you if you can. But let me tell you what CRT is Very in the short time that I have. It really is an academic discipline, but it's also a call to action founded by law professors, mostly of color, who use Marxist analysis to conclude, to hypothesize that racial dominance by whites created uh, systemic racism. They became dominant in universities from the 80s on, uh, but their, their, their impact on, on public policy was limited. The killing of George Floyd, as I said, has changed that. Um, now it has jumped, the university has entered all of our lives. What I like to say is that two bad viruses jumped the lab in 2020, COVID and CRT. So, so how do you recognize it? Well, I'm gonna give you five bedrock principles 
it's not exhaustive actually, but you know, I do have limited time. The most important bedrock uh, assertion that critical race theory makes is that racism is not the result of indi individuals making a conscious decision to be racist. It's not that we're committing the sin of not loving our neighbor because of race. Rather, racism is systemic and structural. It is embedded in American law, the legal system and institutions, in the free enterprise itself, and imposes white behavior as the societal norm. The system, including our capitalist system, is supposedly rigged to reward white behavior and preserve white supremacy. Any curriculum or training session that teaches that Americans must work to dismantle all the laws, traditions, norms, institutions, and even the seventh inning stretch, the entire American system is, itself is part of CRT. The second tenet is that race drives all behavior. Uh, critical race theorists assert that American culture is a conspiracy to, to perpetuate white supremacy by imposing white concepts, everything from punctuality uh, to liking reading and writing. This is, this is stuff that's so ugly. Uh, members of minority groups, therefore, must retain their cultural habits, never adopt standard practices or norms, no matter how neutral they appear. They must never assimilate. A third tenet is that people are, white people are born with unearned privilege that is denied to non-whites. They say this produces a white premium and prevents the white worker, working class to, to, from working with the black working class to overthrow capitalism. Um, the last tenet is that, uh, the last tenet I will discuss with you, there are many other tenets, is that equity must replace equality. And a lot of you must be saying, well, they're the same thing. And they used to be pretty much the same thing. They even sound this, uh, very similar. But CRT has corrupted equity. And now it's the, func the functional opposite of equality. Under CRT, equity demands that race-based discrimination, especially by government, uh, take place because they say that systemic racism produces disparity between the races and that all disparities between the races are the result of systemic racism. The, the, the system will only deepen the disparity. So the government must take hand and, 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 and treat individuals unequally because of our race. So we've taken a huge step backward to before LBJ signed the Civil Rights Act on July the 2nd, 1964, when we said we're going to actually finally do away with race conscious policies. They have not worked and we have strived to do that now. That's what they're insisting that we do. Um, any curriculum that advocates, or any DEI program, diversity, equity, and, and, and inclusion programs that advocates this, that teaches this corrupt understanding of equity, is CRT. And don't let your school principal or Nicole Hannah-Jones tell you otherwise. This is not all of CRT. I've given you just a, a very small part of it. Uh, now you can recognize it and, and, and call it out for what it is. I really thank you for the opportunity to be here. Anytime I get out of the swamp, it's a good day, although I do miss my family, uh, but I think this is the battle of our times, and I ask you to join it. Thank you very much. Grab a seat. I made it on the 10 minutes. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Mike. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I Let, really appreciate it. Let's, uh, let's talk about critical race theory. It, for me, seems like a repudiation of Martin Luther King's dream. Oh. Absolutely. Right, I grew up in a, I went to public schools. Right. This was taught, we are achieving, we are moving right. forward. Right. Where we're not gonna see race, we're gonna judge someone by the content of their character. We're gonna try to, and the government should try to. Right, and now, I, I, I can't believe where we are. It, it feels like we're back to segregationism, but we've just flipped the races. We have to say this, this is, we have truth on our side and we have, we have this on our side. We don't want race conscious policies. Right. We tried that and it was a huge failure. You know, uh, and, 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 and it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and people did get beat up. And we, it took Brown, it took the Civil Rights Act, which was passed, by the way, I'm not a party person, but it was passed with, because of Republican support. Um, and we cannot, the thing is, though, while it was contained within the university, they never met any opposition. They said, yeah, now the, the laws are against this. At the beginning, people were saying, you can't do this, this is racist. Right. But now that it's jumped the walls, and America's is saying, no, no, you can't do this. It's racist. Right. Now they're having to confront this again. We have, we have to complete, continue to repeat this. Sorry for the long answer. No, it's, it's fine. Uh, 
we're seeing a lot of parents step up. A lot of school board videos coming out the last few weeks of parents saying, we don't want this in our schools. Well, what's your message? We've got a lot of people watching online, a lot of people in this room. What is your message to parents with young children in government-run schools that are seeing this now find its way into curriculum? Demand to know the curriculum. Speak to your teacher. Speak to your principal. Don't take this for granted. Don't take no for an answer. When they say, no, the curriculum, it's a private thing. We cannot share it with you. If they say to you, we don't do CRT, which they will say to you, we say, they're going to say, we don't teach CRT, which is kind of true. They're not teaching the writings of Derek Bell or, or Angela Harris or Kimberly Crenshaw, but they're implementing CRT, which is violative of, of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. It's violative of the 14th Amendment, Equal Protection Clause. Fight this. You're fighting for your country and your children. You're fighting for your workplace as well. That's right. That's right. I, it almost feels like we're, we're dealing a bit with the Taliban in the sense that they're trying to destroy history. I mean, we, you know, they're trying to rewrite history. They're trying to destroy history. I remember watching the news and they would all, we, we would gasp that the Taliban had gone in and destroyed all these Buddhist temples and statues and history and rewritten history and tried to get rid of history. They wanted history to come through their perspective. Right. And now we have the left in America that's tearing down statues, right. rewriting history, the 1619 project, right? Com right? Completely debunked, yeah. Right, not the 1776 project. Right. They want a new history. Right. That's what we're facing. We're tasting an, an effort to almost like a new religious zealot tree that wants to get rid of our history. Attorney General Barr said a couple of weeks ago at a keynote speech that because this has become a state religion now under the, the, the establishment clause, this has, it, it, we can no longer attach public school money to the school. It needs to uh, go with the child. It needs to be attached to the child. Right. Right. Um, this is the only way out of this. And you're completely right. There's a reason why Pol Pot named the year in which he came in year zero. There's a reason why Fidel Castro completely uh, a, a, you know, impugned all of Cuban history for 400 years. There's a reason the Bolsheviks hated everything about Russia. Uh, tyrants want to do this. They want to come in and say everything that has happened until now. You know, Nicole Hannah-Jones, in that, in, in that exchange with Joy Reid, she, she was so upset about what is happening because she's saying, that we were so successful in 2020. People, even conservatives, were saying, quote, I'm, I'm quoting her, my country is not what I thought it was. And they were winning. She thought that was success. Mm. That people were saying, oh my God, my country's not what I thought it was. This is a good country. This is not perfect, but this is the greatest experiment in prosperity, human flourishing, and, and, and liberty. Uh, can, we, can we do better? Yes, we can do better, and we need to do better. But believe me, I lived in seven countries at least a year. I was a foreign correspondent and lived in many countries. There's a line out the door of people waiting to get in. There isn't a line in, indoors waiting to get out. There's a reason for that. That's right. That's right. I, their criticism is that conservatives are racist. That's why we don't want to engage They're in racist. critical We're race theory. You know, th right. No, no. If you know you're not a racist, fight this. Because, yeah. you know, this is a, a libel. They're the ones who are, they want to have color-conscious policies. They yeah. want to have color-conscious policies. Repeat that 50 times. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We're invested in this because we believe in the founding principles of this country, that all men are created equal. That we are judged by the content of our character. We need to, be, we need to live up the, to that. that. That is why we're invested in right, this, because right. that's the future we want, not these race-based policies. We have always solved our problems by trying to live up to the, those dreams. We have failed them again and again and again. Yeah. We know that. We failed them with slavery. We failed them with segregation. When have we solved this? By trying to live up to that dream, that, that ideal. That's right. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Gonzalez, Thank he's you. done a great job. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Much. That was great. How do really I appreciate it?